child that captured the nation's attention in the 90s is finally ready to share her story. But before we start, please make sure to subscribe to MNR TV and hit the bell so you never miss any upload from us. Also, leave a like right now. Childhood should be a time of innocence, but unfortunately, some children don't get to grow up feeling safe, loved, and cherished. For these children, childhood isn't something positive. It's a black hole that could swallow them up. Beth Thomas was just 19 months old when she was adopted into a loving family who knew about the suffering she'd endured. Her adoptive parents hoped their love would help Beth overcome the trauma, but as she grew up, it became painfully clear that something was wrong. Beth Thomas was 19 months old when she was taken from her abusive biological parents by the Department of Social Services. A couple named Tim and Julie adopted both her and her brother Jonathan shortly after, but neither one was ready for what would come next. Although social services knew about the children's previous home life, they told Tim and Julie that Beth and Jonathan were perfectly healthy. The parents showered the children with love every day, but no amount of nurturing and care prepared them for the horrors soon to come. Although Beth had a cute smile and outgoing demeanor, the abuse she suffered at the hands of her real father ravaged her psyche. She had inside her a level of anger and resentment towards the world that was quickly beginning to manifest. Initially, Beth suffered from nightmares as a result of her life prior to Tim and Julie. She would often wake up screaming in her room, completely inconsolable. The nightmares, although horrific, were nothing compared to how she began to treat her parents and brother over the next several years. Beth began sneaking into her brother's bedroom at night and physically assaulting him. He was younger and couldn't defend himself from her attacks. If that wasn't enough, she also tormented the family dog. Beth's parents were starting to fear for even their own safety. In fact, her parents were so concerned with her behavior that they had a special lock installed on her bedroom door so she couldn't leave her room at night. They were afraid of the harm their own daughter could cause, and they knew she needed to get some serious help. Tim and Julie sent Beth to a therapist for intensive sessions to find out the cause of her violent outbursts and to learn what they could do to stop them. After listening to what Beth had to say about her actions, she was diagnosed with reactive attachment disorder, a direct result of her violent past. Children with RAD have almost no ability to connect with other humans on an emotional level. Beth was completely incapable of giving or receiving love, and that was why she was acting out. She simply had no empathy for those around her, humans and animals alike. The lack of empathy and inability to feel remorse after heinous actions are classic signs of psychopathy. All of this behavior could be linked back to the abuse Beth suffered as an infant. Children who experience the abuse Beth endured almost always grow up with intense antisocial behavior and social awkwardness. And just like these other children, without proper help, there was no telling how much more pain she'd inflict on her family. Life had become miserable for every member of the household. Jonathan and the dog were suffering from physical abuse, and Tim and Julie were terrified their daughter would eventually try hurting them. It was time to take extreme measures. Tim and Julie enlisted the help of a therapist named Connell Watkins, who specialized in attachment therapy. Watkins was heavily involved in a controversial type of healing known as compression therapy. Even though the method had its critics, Watkins convinced Tim and Julie to give it a try. Compression therapy sought to release suppressed rage in a controlled environment, bringing a child to a state of submission where they could be reparented. The method didn't come without its risks, but amazingly, Beth reacted extremely positively to her first few sessions. Still, that didn't mean she'd take to it for good. 
It took one year of intense compression therapy and a monumental amount of support from her parents, but Beth Thomas finally shed the psychopathic emotional state that plagued her life. She understood right from wrong and realized the hurt she caused for so many years. It's now been 28 years since Beth started the controversial therapy that completely turned her life around, and her life has completely transformed. Her tumultuous childhood was completely put behind her, thanks to Connell Watkins. Unfortunately, Watkins' life didn't pan out as well. Her controversial compression methods landed her in jail for seven years after a 10-year-old girl named Candace accidentally died during a rebirthing ceremony. She was asphyxiated by four adults who were supposed to be helping her through the process. Beth was extremely fortunate to have made it through Watkins' process unscathed. Beth now works as a nurse, and she's also the co-author of a book called More Than a Thread of Hope that discusses all the issues associated with RAD and how parents can learn to cope with a child who suffers from it. Beth also runs a company called Families by Design that offers assistance to children who suffer from RAD. She knows all too well the struggle they face every day, and she's there to let them know there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Beth Thomas is an inspiration to people who struggle with RAD everywhere. Her adoptive parents probably never thought she'd make a full recovery due to the abuse she suffered, and there were moments when they questioned whether she'd have a future at all. The long road to retraining Beth's emotional sensibilities was difficult for everyone involved. And still her adoptive parents refused to back down from the challenge. Some parents of children with psychopathic tendencies feel torn between their child's needs and the rest of the family's safety. It started in 2010. Foster parents Christine and Michael Barnett sped from Indiana to Florida as just a few days earlier, they'd received a phone call asking them if they'd be interested in an emergency adoption of a six-year-old girl. Without hesitation, they said yes. They knew little about the circumstances leading to their new daughter's displacement, or really anything about her at all. According to Christine, the red flags that should have slapped them in the face when they met didn't even register. Christine was nervous as she first met Natalia Grace, who, unbeknownst to the two parents, had characteristics of dwarfism. The agency explained Natalia had a rare bone disorder called spondylopimetophyseal dysplasia. A shock, sure, but it was a ripple compared to what the family would soon learn. Caring for a child with a physical disability was unchartered territory for the Barnetts. Though they were in a financial position to help a child with specific needs, no other information about her past or medical conditions were provided, only a birth certificate. Other than a Ukrainian certificate listing her birthday as September 4, 2003, they had no clue about their child's first six years. Michael and Christine assisted Natalia in walking to the car, pushing away concerns about the ambiguity of it all. The priority was making Natalia feel loved. First stop, Disney World. The Barnetts eased Natalia into the family with special attention, bonding with her three new brothers and ice cream. All efforts were to make their girl comfortable, and on a beach outing, they glimpsed what was going on inside her head. Natalia sat with her parents on the sand watching her brothers swim. She requested to be carried into the waves. So far, she had shown visible difficulty walking. When Mike and Christine replied in a few minutes, Natalia stood up straight and bolted into the water. Still, Christine didn't suspect anything negative. The real questions were raised after bathing Natalia for the first time. I noticed she had full pubic hair. I was so shocked. I had just been told she was six years old, and it was very apparent she wasn't. In the following months, Christine says she and Michael observed other hints that their daughter was older than they thought. The dolls and children's toys they bought her sat untouched. Natalia preferred the company of teenage girls. Once she started opening up, Natalia was quite the conversationalist. Her parents couldn't help but notice her advanced vocabulary, particularly for her age. Also, there wasn't any trace of an accent to her English. Thinking that Natalia would enjoy communicating in her native language, the Barnetts asked a friend of theirs from Ukraine to visit. 
When spoken to, Natalia couldn't provide any details about her former home, let alone understand the language at all. Her demeanor, coupled with finding her menstrual blood-stained underwear hidden in the trash, pushed Christine and Michael to believe Natalia was actually closer to a teenager than the small child she appeared to be physically. Christine said Natalia's age didn't change how she felt about her daughter. If anything, the murky circumstances about Natalia's origins compelled her to create a safe space where she could be herself. That included taking care of her health by determining her medical age. Bone density tests ordered by their physician confirmed what Michael and Christine suspected. The results concluded Natalia to be at least age 14. With that news in mind, the Barnett families claim the love stayed. They just adjusted their parenting to her true age. All the unicorn shirts and princess pattern dresses in Natalia's closet were swapped for more age-appropriate clothing. It was their hopes, Christine said, that when Natalia had permission to live as her actual age, that she let her guard down. Instead, things took a spectacular nosedive. Natalia's behavior grew more erratic by the day. Once, she was captured on a monitor attacking a baby when no one else was in the room. Then there were times when she'd wiped body fluids on the wall. The most troubling was Natalia's satisfaction for harming others, namely her mother. I saw her putting chemicals, bleach, Windex, something like that in my coffee, and I asked her, what are you doing? She said, I'm trying to poison you, Christine said. For the better part of the next two years, Natalia was evaluated by a slew of health professionals for psychiatric disorders. During one of her several stays in St. Vincent Indianapolis Stress Center, she confided in a clinical therapist that she was, indeed, 18 years old. In March 2012, their primary care doctor, Andrew McLaren, provided a note agreeing that Natalia's birth certificate must be inaccurate. He explained, given all the admissions Natalia previously made to other doctors, that she was a career con artist. When medical professionals confirmed their suspicions, the Barnetts decided to have Natalia's age legally changed. Not out of malice, they say, but to ensure their daughter could receive the level of adult psychiatric care that her doctor said she truly needed. Judge Gerald S. Zor concluded that their evidence was sufficient to prove Natalia wasn't born in 2003, as her birth certificate stated. He approved the change to her legal age, making her new birth year 1989. After she left psychiatric care, Christine and Michael helped their now legally 22-year-old daughter secure an apartment. They wanted to get Natalia on track to independence since, in the eyes of the state, she was an adult. They held her hand through signing up for food stamps, getting a social security number, an official ID, and applying for state benefits. Assistance only went so far. A few months into Natalia's solo living experiment, things went haywire. Behavior problems got Natalia booted from her state-run psychiatric housing. So, take two, the Barnetts helped to get her set up in another apartment in Lafayette, Indiana. Still filling a parental role at a careful arm's reach, the Barnetts tried to map out Natalia's next steps. In daily conversations, Kristen said she and Natalia discussed college. Her next step was making high school equivalency so she could pursue a cosmetology program. They agreed to pay for the first year of school, as they did with their other kids. Natalia's future looked bright. I co-signed the lease and paid for the rent up front for a year. I did everything you would do when you send your child off to college. I helped her with groceries and bought furniture at Target, Christine said. Others disagreed with the Barnett's motive. In the midst of Natalia's age conundrum, Christine and Michael were getting attention for the achievements of their son, Jake. By 12 years old, Jake made waves as a physics prodigy, publishing scholarly papers and fielding college offers. The spotlight cast on the entire family in a 2012 episode of 60 Minutes. Natalia appeared on camera too, seated at the dinner table next to Christine. No mention of their ongoing saga with their daughter was made. While Natalia settled into her apartment, Christine published her book, The Spark, A Mother's Story of Nurturing, Genius, and Autism. 
As she tells it, Natalia was set up for success when they moved to Canada for Jake's next opportunity. Prior to moving, Christine saw signs of Natalia's regression. A pink childlike dress in her closet and an equally immature bike sat outside the apartment building. If Natalia was pretending to be younger, as a legal adult, Christine's hands were tied. From Canada, Christine said she attempted to maintain contact with Natalia, but she answered the phone less and less. The final time they spoke, Natalia told her she was making spaghetti for her new family. Their last news of Natalia was when she changed the beneficiary from her social security from Michael to someone else. Christine presumed she'd hoodwinked another family. She resigned to wash her hands of the drama until she was charged with felony neglect. In September of 2019, a Tippecanoe County judge approved warrants for the arrest of Christine and Michael Barnett. The couple divorced in 2014, with Michael moving back to Indiana. Despite their split, they were united in shock at the neglect allegations. Natalia was a woman. She had periods. She had adult teeth. She never grew a single inch, which would happen even with a child with dwarfism, Christine told the Daily Mail in attempts to clear her name. What started as a bizarre story has only gotten stranger since authorities refute the Barnett's claims that Natalia was an adult. They say back in 2010, a bone density test by a different doctor than the parents allege proved Natalia was only age 8. That means Natalia would only have been 11 when her family moved to Canada, leaving her behind to fend for herself. Michael and Christine both challenged these claims, pleading not guilty to their charges. Authorities were notified in 2014 and interviewed Natalia, who stuck to that story, that she was a child and her family had taken off. One major concern is why the police waited over five years to pursue action against her parents. The answer to that and so many other questions remain to be seen. Police claim Michael Barnett admitted that Christine concocted the theory that Natalia was older than she looked, but his lawyers deny that completely. Reports by the Daily Mail dug further into Natalia's elusive history prior to her adoption. A woman named Anna claimed to be Natalia's biological mother and supported the 2003 birth date stamped on the Ukrainian birth certificate. She gave a teary account of Natalia's birth, saying the doctors advised her to give her baby up because she wouldn't be able to provide the serious level of care required for a child with her disability. Now she regrets her decision after seeing the harm Natalia suffered at the hands of her doctors. Luckily, though, a family did step forward and take the teenage girl into their care after Christine and Michael moved to Canada. Pastor Antoine Manns and his wife Cynthia came into contact with Natalia sometime between 2013 and 2016. They haven't given statements to the media, but from their social media accounts, it's clear they considered Natalia their daughter. In light of these developments, Christine and Michael stuck to their story that Natalia is a 30-year-old suffering from severely dangerous psychological problems. There's no debating that Natalia looks older in recent pictures. Whether she's a teen or not, time will tell. <laughs>